Are you making these Google Analytics mistakes? In this video, I'm gonna go with you through 10 checkpoints to ensure you're using Google Analytics correctly. All and more coming up right after this. Hi there, and welcome to another video of measureschool.com where we teach you the data-driven way of digital marketing. My name is Julian, and on this channel, we do marketing tech reviews, tutorials, and give you tips on better Google Analytics use, just like this one. So if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. Now, Google Analytics is a very complex tool. You have a lot of configurations, you have a lot of businesses that work with this tool, but oftentimes you find yourself that your Google Analytics is just not working out for you. Maybe you're making some mistakes, and today I wanna give you 10 checkpoints that you can go through with me and see if you have done them correctly or configured your Google Analytics correctly to take those points into account so you can do your analysis with Google Analytics. And we got lots to cover, so let's dive in. Number one, not setting up goals. Now once you have Google Analytics installed, you should set up goals right away. Goals are basically what gives meaning to your data in Google Analytics. So you can tell Google Analytics specifically that this action or this outcome is desired in your Google Analytics installation and it will carry throughout the interface. So when you look at your page views, you will be able to see if they are good or bad because you will know how they relate to your actual outcome, to your goal that you want your users to achieve. So goals are very important to set up. Now there are different types of goals. You can tag a page view as a goal conversion, you can tag um, certain events as a goal conversion, or uh, use e-commerce tracking to track revenue that is generated on your website. All types of goals or indicating to Google Analytics that this is the desired outcome that you want your users to take on your website and then track that in Google Analytics as well. Number two, not using UTM parameters. Now, if you ever looked into your sources or acquisition report, you probably asked yourself, how does Google actually know where the user is coming from? Now, it's pretty easy. If he comes from another website, Google Analytics can actually um, pick that up automatically. But there's also a column oftentimes or row oftentimes um, called direct none. And this is full with people who Google couldn't really identify. And that's where UTM parameters come in. So if you have a source where you explicitly know that the user is coming from, for example, Facebook or your Bing advertising, and you want to tell that information to Google Analytics, you need to be using UTM parameters. Now, if you don't know what UTM parameters are, then check out our video right over there. But it's basically a way to explicitly tell Google Analytics this is where the user just came from. And you should definitely be using them if you have any kind of outside sources that you want to track with Google Analytics. Mistake number three, not having clean data. Now, data quality in Google Analytics doesn't take care by itself. You constantly need to look through your data and see if it's plausible and if there are any tracking mistakes. Now, that starts with, is the data actually correctly tracked? Do you have the JavaScript code on all the pages and it, is, it, is it executing actually correctly? Um, second thing, if the data is coming in, do you want to block some data out? For example, spam referrals or your colleagues or yourself that is surfing on the website. That is all data that you need to ensure that it doesn't enter your Google Analytics account because you can take it out later on. Now, there are more configurations within Google Analytics that you can ensure data quality with. So for example, if you have different domains, you might be eligible for cross-domain tracking. Um, I would definitely recommend to always look through your account, see if the data is still plausible and ensure data quality on a regular basis. Number four, collecting personal identifiable information. Now, PII is something that Google Analytics doesn't allow you to send into the system itself. That's because of privacy reasons and you need to make sure that you are not accidentally sending that information over. Now, what is PII information? That's for example, the email address, the phone number, or um, first name and last name. That's information that Google Analytics doesn't want to send into, uh, have in your system, in their system, basically in their database, because they don't want to be liable for that. And that's why they actually prohibit to send it in in their terms of service. Now, if you are sending that information, you are in danger of your Google Analytics account basically being shut down because you violate the terms of service. So ensure that you're not sending this information in. And that can actually happen quite often accidentally. So for example, Google Analytics 
is tracking page view. So if any kind of page view uh, or the URL of the page view has uh, any kind of PII information that needs to be filtered out before it actually goes to Google Analytics. So um, if you wanna check this, go into your all pages report and type in email or an ad sign and see if there's any email address in your URLs. That can happen, for example, when somebody types in a form field and puts in an email address and that gets captured in the URL somehow, then you need to go back and change the form around in order to not send that information over to Google Analytics. Number five, not using a tag management system. Now it's pretty old school to install uh, the actual JavaScript onto your page, unless you have a very good reason to do that. Normal, no, nowadays you normally use a tag management system such as Google Tag Manager, Adobe DTM or Telium to manage your tracking codes, but also your other marketing codes like the AdWords conversion tracking and the Facebook pixel, for example. Now this is not a must do, but definitely a good practice to keep in mind to put all your codes into a tag management system and handle them from there. That way you can also delegate a bit of the responsibility of these codes of keeping them up to date to the tag management system itself. And it's definitely something you should be taking care of if you are installing Google Analytics on a new website. Number six, not segmenting your data. So if you go through Google Analytics and you are analyzing and coming to a conclusion, have you actually segmented your data beforehand? Now, data in aggregate doesn't really make sense. The classic example is users who are prospects to your website and actually already customers to your website or have bought something before, they tend to use your website completely different. And therefore you should be segmenting your user groups in order to be able to have a correct analysis and ensure that uh, you are deriving the right insights from this user group and the behavior that they're doing. So always segment your data when you are analyzing within Google Analytics. Mistake number seven is something that I don't see that often anymore, but it sometimes happens still using UTM parameters for internal links. So some people actually use the sources report to track internal links because they want to know how many people actually came from the homepage and bought my product. And so they start tagging the links internally on their website, on their internal links. And that's a big mistake because you are screwing up your source data and overwriting the actual last known source in Google Analytics. So actually later on, you won't be able to attribute your conversions to the last known source, but only that internal link that was clicked. A better idea is to actually use event tracking for that purpose. Build in events to uh, track your internal links and what interactions the user has done on your website. Number eight, not using annotations. Now annotations are really about giving context to your data in the manual form of just writing notes into your data. There's this little functionality within Google Analytics that you can click under the chart and add a um, annotation to your data. And this can be something like um, we launched this week or we changed platforms or Facebook advertising was switched off for a day or two. And when somebody looks into that data later on, and analyzes it, he can take those annotations, those notes into consideration in his analysis and that might help him to do better analysis and draw the right conclusions with those notes in mind. So definitely use annotations if you haven't made use of them yet. Number nine, misunderstanding the Google Analytics model. Now Google Analytics is heavily used on the JavaScript code that is installed on your page. Now, the way Google Analytics tracks is just a model of how they think it should be, and we have all gotten used to it. But once you start comparing data with other systems, with other tracking systems, or even your um, backend system, how many orders came in and how that actually relates to Google Analytics, you will notice very quickly that the data doesn't stack up. And that's because Google Analytics has a very specific model that they deploy on their data and that's something you need to be aware of. So what are actually sessions? What does a user actually mean within Google Analytics? Um, how is bounce rate defined? All these different definitions actually shape the model of Google Analytics and you need to be aware of that in order to understand your data correctly. So if you wanna brush up on that, I would definitely recommend the new Google Analytics course from Google themselves that you can check out in the description below. And finally, number 10, not taking action. 
Now, this is something I have already mentioned in our uh, 10 skills to master within Google Analytics video. But this is very an important one. What do you do after you analyze your data within Google Analytics? You actually not just puke out reports and give it to people that don't do anything with it. You need to go to the step of actually recommending stuff, uh, taking action on your data. There are great tools to, for doing this. For example, the uh, custom audience feature within Google Analytics to retarget people on AdWords or um, optimize, which is an A-B testing solution of uh, Google that you can utilize in combination with Google Analytics. But also taking that data, presenting it to your stakeholders, but also recommending action. And only if that data actually changes behavior within the company or the people who are using the website, then you are going full circle with your Google Analytics use and you get the most out of the tool. All right, so there you have it. These are my 10 mistakes that you shouldn't make within Google Analytics. Now, I would love to hear from you if I forgot anything or if you are a consultant and you actually have clients on Google Analytics and see mistakes very often. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments below if you uh, have anything to add. Um, if you like this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could share it to a friend or colleague or maybe a client who might find this useful. And if you haven't yet, then uh, consider subscribing right over there because we bring you new videos every week. Now, my name is Julian, till next time.